This next topic kind of follows on from the last topic in a way. So we're going to talk about gear overload, especially on YouTube and just in the world in general, how much stuff is actually out there versus how much stuff you actually need. I think it's starting to get pretty crazy. I said this a while ago when I said no more demos on a video because I just felt like there's too much gear overload. And I still feel that way. I feel like it may have actually gotten worse. I'm gonna try and save you as much money as I can right now at the detriment of companies wanna working with me and all that kind of stuff. I, I really just don't care. So one thing that I should point out is if you've got a tube screamer, a bog standard tube screamer or a blues driver and you like it, keep it. Let me put it to you like this. Out of all of the pedals I've demoed over the years, might be 500, might be 800. I'm not exactly sure, but it's a lot. There's not a whole lot of difference between a Tube Screamer and anything else. And that anything else could be insert brand here. I don't really care what it is. It can be a hand painted box from some you know prestigious country somewhere or whatever. It doesn't really matter. The tones aren't gonna be that dissimilar live. I'm gonna tell you why. And this kind of piggybacks, like I said, off the last topic, which I'll put up in the cards if you haven't already seen that. So basically what I'm trying to say is this. You're gonna dial in your sound, whether or not you've got a Tube Screamer, a Blues Driver, a King of Tone, a Clon, or whatever. Now, inherently, there are some differences in the tone between a Clon and a Tube Screamer. There's no doubt about it. Some of these pedals do vary and do different things in your chain. What I'm trying to say is, don't get too suckered into buying something if you already like what you've got. You should be able to get a good sound or just as good sound out of a Tube Screamer as you would out of some of these other pedals. One thing I've noticed a lot on YouTube is people say, man, a lot of these pedals sound the same. And I'm gonna tell you why they sound the same. It's because people like us who demo gear have usually a particular type of sound in our head which we can dial in. And I think that's the key. If you know the sound you like, you should be able to dial it in and you will be able to dial it in no matter what pedal you're gonna use. There are some nasty pedals out there as well, but if you get something or if you watch a video and you go, man, that sounds great, and you already own a Tube Screamer, odds are you could probably kind of approximate the sound with the Tube Screamer because a lot of these other pedals are kind of similar. There's some that have less mids and more mids and upper mids and bass controls and treble controls and all that kind of stuff. There's no doubt about it. Some sound better on than others, especially in the context of just playing at home, right? If you're just playing at home, you're gonna notice more difference between pedals than anywhere. If you start playing live or you already play live and you've got a Tube Screamer and then you wanna get all these other type of boutique pedals, this isn't advocating a Tube Screamer. I'm using that as an example, by the way, but they're all gonna sound the way that you dial them in to, you, to get your particular sound. So if you've been using a Tube Screamer for a long time and you love that sound, then you go buy a boutique pedal. It does kind of the same thing. It's an overdrive pedal. Odds are you're gonna set it up pretty similar and you'll get a very similar tone. And in the live mix, you might like it less, you might like it more, it might not sound any different. So just keep that in mind. I'm a huge, huge advocate for not going out and blowing a whole lot of money on pedals that essentially do the same thing. So my advice is if you wanna use one as a rhythm pedal, that's cool. Use another one as a boost. You can daisy chain them that way if you choose to and that's gonna be fine. My point is this, if you plan on buying a second, third or fourth overdrive pedal, try and find one that does something different or at least stacks well into one you already like. Don't keep replacing your main pedal. So that's where the Klon works extremely well. It stacks great into just about anything you push it into because of its frequency. It's a very different type of sound. It sounds crap on its own in my opinion. And I've owned Klons, I've owned a couple of Klons over the years and I always feel like they're, they're best either pushing an amp that's already already dirty or going into another pedal. So you gotta find the right one that will work with your sound to give you what you want. You can save yourself a whole lot of time and money and focus on playing as opposed to focusing on your pedals. The pedals aren't gonna make you sound that much better. You might think they're gonna give you more of this or that, but generally they won't. Like I said, I've been stuck in the trap of using too much stuff and now I'm back to using almost nothing as the best sound I've ever had. Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I know on YouTube, the gear thing is kind of like a bit of a black hole when it comes to stuff. There's just so much information. And once you go down into that tunnel, man, it's there's just too much stuff to keep track of and too, almost too many options. Let's say a child is born every second, you know, one, two. That's how I feel how many pedal companies are popping up. They're popping up just as often as kids. It's insane. <laughs>